All right, hello everyone. One hour. Let's see if I can I, let's see if I can get this done within one hour. Please smash that like button uh, on your way in, no matter how long you stay. I know that some folks uh, pop in and out, and uh, they just stay for a, a little while. But if no matter how long you stay, please smash that like button. So tonight, uh, I'm going to talk about something I've been kind of watching and uh, thinking about for a little while here. And uh, uh, I'm going to be a little, a little careful talking about this one. I'm going to kind of maybe creep around like Scooby and Shaggy, you know, because this is a this is a pretty uh, sensitive topic. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the 4B movement uh, tonight. Uh, and I guess this one will be a bit of a, a mixture. It'll be a bit of a hybrid between current events, uh, culture and a little bit of science. The intro I'm going to play is from one of my uh, science streams over on my science channel. So let me make sure I can see myself on YouTube and then I will jump in and uh, I will get this party started. I see folks are coming in, please smash that like button. And if you are new, please consider subscribing to the channel. There is the live icon. I promise there won't be, well, maybe I shouldn't speak too prematurely, but there probably won't be any technical glitches tonight i think the computer the last time it wanted to update so this unit for whatever reason when it wants to update the applications don't work the way they should all right let me play the intro and then uh, i'll jump in and then i will wrap up so the 4b movement what is it and what are its future tour stops is this one of them all right because of where I come from. See, in this world, we're all living in, in different worlds and not everybody is privy to the same information. Some population control programs pressured women to use only certain officially mandated contraceptives in Egypt, Tunisia, Pakistan, South Korea, and Taiwan. Health worker salaries were in a system that invited abuse dictated by the number of IUDs they inserted into women. In the Philippines, birth control pills were literally pitched out of helicopters hovering over remote villages. Millions of people were sterilized, often coercively, sometimes illegally, frequently in unsafe conditions in Mexico, Bolivia, Peru, Indonesia, and Bangladesh because of where I come from. See, in this world, we're all living in, in different worlds and not everybody is privy to the same information. Not everybody is privy to the same information. I'm gonna change that up at some point. Some of you may be getting tired of hearing that, but it's true. It's true. Uh, not everybody knows that there is a, a quote unquote, a 4B movement. Uh, not everybody, not everybody knows about Drizzle Drizzle. <laughs> I'm sure Barry Little knows about Drizzle Drizzle, but not everybody knows about um, that thing. Barry Little, thank you so much, man. I just got started. I, I didn't even earn that tip, but Barry Little, thank you for blessing me with that. He says, um, good afternoon, Dr. Dunbar and chat, kicking off tonight's tuition drive, hashtag support independent black male media, hashtag support your scholars. Okay. Okay. Barry, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate all, I appreciate all the support, uh, financial and just the eyeballs and everybody else who's watching, whoever comes in, please let me know what you think about this. Again, I'm going to approach this from a more, uh, uh, a collegial and scholarly way. I'm going to kind of tiptoe around as I joked before, like, like Scooby and Shaggy and not get myself caught up in uh, any any quagmires uh, afterwards. All right, so that intro, that intro, that intro was from something from my science and technology YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, I have a STEM channel. It's called, it's named similar, it, it has a similar name to this channel. It's a spinoff, as they say in media. It's called Big Discussions 76 Science and Technology. 
I haven't live streamed over there in a while. Uh, I've been working the shorts. Aquateki, he'd come over and hang out quite a bit over there. But it's it's science. It's, it's very, very esoteric. I try to make it as digestible for other people, for non-scientists as I can. But um, by nature of it being that, I know it's only going to appeal to certain people. But back in December, around the time Michigan won the, the Big Ten championship, uh, I did a stream on a gentleman named uh, Paul Ehrlich. Paul Ehrlich uh, is a uh, an entomologist. I don't know if, if he's still alive, but Paul Ehrlich, what you heard in that intro was an excerpt from an essay on Paul Ehrlich, which lifted out an excerpt from his book, Population Bomb. So Paul Ehrlich was an entomologist and he wrote the book, The Population Bomb. And I, I thought that would be a good live stream to do because population is a big deal today, okay? And some countries, the one we're going to talk about tonight, South Korea, uh, they're they're facing some very, very, uh, they're, very, they're facing a very, very strong population decline trend. And it's not being talked about a lot by our political class here, but I think they're they're looking at that and they're wondering if that's going to make a tour stop here. What, what's happening over there? Is that going to come here? And that's been one of the um, one of the. And it's not just me speculating on this, but one of the reasons for the immigration for the the, the current administration's lax uh, border policy. That's been one of the reasons, and that's because the population. The replacement rate in this country uh, is kind of it's relatively low um, based upon where it once was. And so what happens if you don't have a population? What happens if you have a shrinking population? Well, well I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. My uh, and I'll be discreet with this. My supervisor at my nine to five, because I unfortunately I, I don't YouTube all the time. I, I, I haven't I can't I guess if I try to make a living off this. I, maybe I could do it, but I don't make a living off this. This is something I'm doing in my spare time because I'm a writer and an and, and aspiring author. But I do have a nine to five and my supervisor sends us an email every morning. I mean, every, every Monday morning to, to, you know, tell us what she wants us to do for the week. But she wrote, happy tax day. This is income tax day, April 15th. Some people love this day. Some people dread this day because they have to pay money out. Some people love it because they're going to get money back from the federal government. I don't know which what, what you guys are going to what, what what group you guys fall into, but some people love this day, some people hate this day. But the point is, if there are fewer people and if there are no people, where would the government get its tax dollars from? Okay, so the government needs tax dollars. Okay, the economy needs bodies. The government needs bodies. The economy needs bodies. So, the, so there's a lot of, a lot of fear mongering and a lot of, you know, the, the border, the borders being overrun. People are coming. We don't know where they're coming from. Uh, and even in the, the B1 sector, the B1 sector, there's a lot of, a lot of talk about, well, you're doing all these things. The government's doing all these things for these migrants. What have they done for black people over the years? Okay, so a lot of a lot, a lot of people are focusing on that, but I think one of the um, central issues is that they're worried about the the population shrinking. Okay, and I actually talked about this with Dr. Anthony Davies and James R. Harrigan from the Words and Numbers podcast about oh, a year and a half ago. This is me asking them about that and what they said about that the workings of our government and our history better than some of <laughs> the citizens do here so we know you, you guys already talked about social security and how, and how they're how they're replenishing that well and we've heard so for so many years that it's not going to be there for for for, for the, the gen xers and those coming after us And I'm sure you, you gentlemen have also heard that the Western countries, ours included, the populations are not 
replacing were, were below replacement. They're not talking about this. The political class is. Does this have something to do with with all of that? Yeah, it's a Ponzi scheme. And when you no longer have enough people at the bottom of the Ponzi scheme, it, the Ponzi scheme falls apart. Yeah, what one of the things that contributes to an ever growing economy is an ever growing population, because the more people you have, the more entrepreneurs you have, the more people you have to just simply work. And so we end up producing more stuff. And if we get to a point where our population turns around, starts declining, other things equal, I don't see from that point forward an ever expanding economy. I see an ever shrinking economy. Yep. And I'm, I'm a little worried about that. I think that, you know, that's not an unreasonable thing to be worried about. When you have a shrinking population, you're going to have an ever shrinking economy. And in that regard, a, a shrinking country, a shrinking government. OK, so uh, they're dealing with that in South Korea right now. And uh, will that movement make a tour stop here next? Someone in the YouTube streets said that our elected officials are looking at that right now and they're concerned about that, about that coming here, which brings me to my next point. So I have several channels and I, I, I just did a, a uh, I created an upload over on my entertainment and media channel called uh, How Mr. Spock's uh, Knowledge of Zoology Saved uh, the Earth. I grew up as a Trekkie. You know what? Let me just show it to you guys because this is a, an excuse for me to uh, do some advertising here. Give me a second. I promise not to belabor this. Actually, let me just go here. Yeah, there it is. There's me a couple of years ago with no beard. Right. So I'm going to enable my screen share again. You guys keep letting me know what you think in the chat. Uh, say something. Very little. J3, thank you for being there. I'm going to work around to South Korea shortly because I don't want to eat too late because that's bad for it's bad for your health to go to sleep with food on your stomach. So this is my entertainment and media channel. And that's my latest upload there. There's a market for everything on YouTube. And I grew up as a, a Trekkie. And that video is entitled How Mist how Spock's knowledge of zoology saved planet Earth and the Alpha Quadrant. It's about Star Trek Four. I don't know if you guys are into that, but one of the things that I noted in that video uh, is that Indigo Flow, thank you for stopping through, is that Mr. Spock in that movie in Star Trek, there were, there were always there was always some sort of puzzle to to to, to unravel or to uh, decipher in order for the the crew of the enterprise to save the day but mr spock in that movie he leaned on his knowledge of uh zoology and so for those of you who don't know zoology is the study of the animal kingdom all right uh humans are not on the slide but zoology zoology is the study of the animal kingdom uh we had to, we had to take that as a uh uh, a prerequisite course or an introductory course at my HBCU, John C. C. Smith University, JCSU, go Golden Bulls. We had to take zoology and botany. And humans were, were humans. You guys there in the chat, you guys are humans. Humans are a part of the animal kingdom. But we are unique in that we are the only species. Any zoologists watching this, please correct me. We are the only ones with the prefrontal cortex, which means that we can think things out. We can reason, we can plan, we can ponder, we can reflect, okay? As opposed to using our lizard brains, okay? So we can form cultures, we can practice religions, we can um, make choices about our sexual and reproductive cycles, whether or not to use them, whether or not to get on birth control, whether or not to participate, we as humans can do that. We have a prefrontal cortex, which gives us cognition, okay? Um, and so other, the rest of the members of the animal kingdom don't have to worry about this. So with that cognition, 
also comes influenced by culture, okay, uh, and influenced by movements, okay? And so there's a movement that's been building steam over in South Korea uh, called uh, the 4B movement. And I'm going to get to that, but basically uh, one half of your, your gender over there, because in the animal kingdom, you, you usually have a male and a female, and they come together to reproduce, right? But if you have one gender just checking out and falling out, then you're not going to reproduce. Your, your population is going to shrink, and <coughs> it may eventually just go extinct altogether, okay? So I think that's a nice setup for what I'm going to show. So shout out to my mom. You need to show data during your discussions. So we're going to look at we're going to look at some population numbers and then I'm going to jump into this very very short piece about the 4B movement over in uh South Korea. So think about that. Lions, tigers, bears, um uh, humpback whales, none of them are arguing about gender roles. None of them are arguing about who's going to lead the pride. None of them are arguing and, and disagreeing about equal rights and equal this and equal that. Human beings are the only ones <laughs> who are doing this. So, I mean, we we form these advanced societies with all this technology, but we're 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 the only species uh, dealing with this type of thing. Okay, so I did some quick research. Uh, very little says uh, noir drizzle drizzle <laughs> drizzle drizzle. I didn't know what that was until I watched the video on it earlier. Uh, good evening. Thank you for uh, being here. Oh, your avatar is, that looks like, uh, it's either Agent Smith or it's Neo. It looks like one of the agents. Very Little says, uh, that was the one where Spock went into the tank. Yep, mine melded with the whale and with, with uh, Gracie, and she told him she was pregnant. They're not your damn whales. That's what he told the uh, uh, Jillian, I think her name was. Okay, so all this data is online. You guys can look this up and these are these will be below in the description box unless YouTube poaches them out. All right. Uh this comes from the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, and this is a legitimate website. I looked at it earlier and it's .gov. So this is a this is from the Central Intelligence Agency. Give me one second here everybody. Let me go back to my channel. Please smash that like button if you haven't, and please let me know what you think about any of this. Guys, keep it PG, please. So this is from the CIA. Uh, country comparisons, total fertility rate. The total fertility rate compares figures for the average number of children that would be born per woman if all women lived to the end of their childbearing years and bore children. Uh, according to a given fertility rate at each age. The TFR is a more direct measure of the level of fertility than the crude birth rate since it refers to births per woman. Okay, so let me stop for a second here because the question might come up. Dr. Dunbar, why are you worried about this? Why do you care? Well, I'm a member, I'm a citizen in this country, number one, and number two, I'm also a scientist. So Paul Ehrlich, let me bring Paul Ehrlich back to give this context. Paul Ehrlich was an entomologist, right? But he was also an ecologist. Do, do my members in the chat there, my, my guests in the chat, do you guys know, do you all know what ecology is? Does anybody know what ecology is? Anybody? Barry, uh, uh, Noir Drizzle Drizzle, J3, anybody, anybody who hasn't spoken up yet, do any of you know what ecology is? I don't know that I have the slide queued up here, and unfortunately, I don't. Let me pull it up for you really, really quickly for the sake of uh, completeness here. Ecology, ecology, for the people who would say, why is Dr. Dunbar covering this? What you know? Why do you care if the birth rates are high or low? What do you care? People ask those things when you create content. Um, where's my ecology slide? 
I see I see two comments there. I appreciate your participation. Here it is, ecology. Ecology is the study of uh, how organisms live together. I've shown this slide on my STEM channel. So here you have you have uh, plant life there, grass. You have a, an earthworm, a beetle. That's your 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 lower tier. Then you have a, a duck, a catfish, a snake, and then you have a stork. I think that's a stork. A pelican's got the broad jaw, but you have a stork, an alligator, and a, uh, a turtle there. So ecology is all about the environment and how organisms live together and uh, cohabitate in a given space. So there are food webs and food chains. And in nature, in nature, if you remove something from the food chain, you will disrupt the entire ecosystem. So, for example... If you remove that duck, that duck eats that worm, okay, now the population of worms will grow out of control, okay, and they may eat up all the grass. And then that pelican has nothing, that stork, not a pelican, that stork has nothing to eat. That's ecology, okay? So when you're thinking about population and, and there being too many humans, we're talking about ecology. How many humans can the earth support? Is there a such thing as too many humans? Well, Paul Ehrlich and other groups, they were worried about that back in the 1970s. There might come a point, there might come a time where there are too many humans and the earth may not be able to support everybody. So I made that stream over on my science channel because you have to wonder with culture and culture influencing biology, I just talked about that. You have to wonder if some of these things that we're seeing are intentional, okay? Uh, it's my opinion that another concern of our world leaders is, is every, everybody running out of energy, okay? Because to have advanced societies like the ones we have, to do this live stream, to drive around, even if you're using an electric car, that's energy, okay? So if you have too many people, okay, may, you might run out of energy at some point and just have a, a massive crisis. So as I read through the 4B movement, as I read through this short piece, as I show these population numbers, think about that. Are these things happening by chance or is some of this orchestrated? Okay, let me go back. I see three more comments here. Yeah, very little says the science of the environment. Indigo Flow says, uh, how organisms relate to each other, how they live together and coexist. And sometimes certain organisms keep the populations of other organisms in check. Okay. And some of the other content creators, the master teacher, the nameless protagonist, they did a lot of work on the mouse utopia experiments. Because of these technologies that we've created, <clears throat> humans may have, we have maybe, we may have been able to artificially create environments where we have these mass population numbers. If anyone wants to make a um, a cash app or PayPal donation, my cash app and PayPal are right there. Very little thank you again for the super chat. Okay, total fertility. This is from the CIA. So this is from our government. I didn't know the CIA was keeping track of these numbers in other countries, but they are. Okay, so the total fertility rate, this link is below. So this lists out all the countries uh, in the world. Okay, everybody should be able to see that. So I'm gonna just scroll through this really, really quickly. I'm gonna sprint through so that, that, that middle column, so that right column, that's country, and that middle column designates children born per woman, okay? Uh, and the far left column, that's the date of information. So Niger, the country Niger, N Niger, Niger, they're leading the charge in this metric for uh, birth rates in the world. So I'm going to just sprint through this. You guys can look at this. This is in the description box below. So all these countries are at the top. Niger, Angola, the Democratic Republic of Congo, 
Mali, Benin, Chad, Uganda, Somalia, Africa. Africa is leading the charge here. <laughs> Mozambique, Nigeria, Sudan. Okay. So I'm going to sprint through. The United States is much further down the list. It's much further down the list. It's some, there it is. The United States is uh, 1.84, 1.84. And I'm going to compare that to the top. The United States is 1.84. Niger is 6.73. So they have about, they're, they're, they're about four times, their, their number is about four times hours, three to four times hours. Okay, please smash that like button if you haven't. Chaos Rain, thank you for stopping through. Cynical Optimist says, Bio Culturons, shout out to the Crimson Cure. Shout out to the Crimson Cure. I have her book. I got halfway through it. All right. I'd like to interview her one day. Okay. So the, the United States is much further down this list. South Korea, which we're going to read about shortly. South Korea is right there at the bottom at 1.11. Okay, so they are 0.7 below the United States. You guys keep letting me know what you think there in the chat. Okay, this link is in the description box in case you guys want to keep a, keep a copy for yourself. As Dr. Tia San Johnson said, information doesn't always stay up. Sometimes they take things down for any number of reasons. So uh, here today, gone tomorrow. Now this one is from the who is this one from i think this one is from the who or the world bank the who or the world bank but i'm going to show it nonetheless this is also in the description box below this one is called birth by country and i think they have I think the other one was an estimate. These are actual numbers. So I'm going to go to the bottom here. Well, let's, let's take a look at this. The top 10 countries with the highest birth rate per 1,000 people from the CIA, World Factbook 2021 estimate. So again, Niger is there at the top, Angola, Benin, Mali, Uganda, Chad, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Somalia, South Sudan, Mozambique. So Africa, third proliferating over in Africa, in the motherland. Uh, 10 countries with the lowest birth rate per 1,000 people. So St. Pierre and uh, Miquelon, Monaco, Andorra. I've never heard of the country of Andorra before, before now. Japan, South Korea, Italy, Spain, Taiwan, Greece, and Puerto Rico. Okay, so let's see, St. Pierre, Miquelon, that's 6.54, Niger is 46.86. Okay, so Niger is blowing everybody out here. Okay, so now they've, they've also compiled all the countries. So let's take a quick look at that. And let's see where the United States is. So this one, guys, this has, has its own tool, uh, scroll bar. So you could probably type each country in that any country in that you want here. Um, but the, the far right column once again designates country. That middle column designates birth rate per 1,000 people. And then that far left column is birth rate. And that's the CIA estimate, I believe. But I think it comes from that data set I just showed. So Niger is at the top. And the United States, I looked at this earlier. The United States is right there in the middle. So 11, 11 uh, births per 1,000 people. And so Niger, is 44, 45 births per 1,000 people. That's consistent with the numbers we just saw. It's about four times as much. And then South Korea, South Korea is 5.6 births 
per 1,000 people. Okay. So once again, you know, if you don't have people, you don't have a country. Okay. But why, what, for the people who are unaware of what's going on in South Korea and in other places around the world, what would give rise to this? Well, as I stated, the humans, humans are the only animal species who are influenced by culture. Okay. Other lions, tigers, bears, uh, humpback whales, they, they, they don't have social movements. So they're just dealing with biology. We're dealing with biology and culture and religion and politics and all of that. Okay. And what happens when social factors and, and, and culture and movements, what happens when something makes one you're, you're a, a sexual species and something something culture related makes one gender just tap out altogether. Well, let's see what's happening in South Korea. Uh, seeking my creator, thank you for stopping through. Brent C, thank you for stopping through as well. And when I was growing up, you know, I, I know O.J. Simpson just passed. Rest in peace, Mr. Orenthal, James Simpson. Go Bills. When I was, uh, it was a big deal, I think, in the 80s or the 90s when South Korea hosted the Olympics. That was a big deal. Seoul, Korea, Seoul, Korea, Seoul, Korea. Seoul's going to be the home of the 1988, I think it was the 1988 Olympics. So uh, this was once a celebrated land. All right. This is a short piece, everyone. I promise. I think this one leans slightly anti-patriarchy, but I think it gives a nice summary and discussion of um, their changed environment over in South Korea. This one is entitled uh, South Korea's Feminist 4B Movement and Explainer. This was written on November 2nd, 2023 by Simon Coates. And this is a slideshow of uh, the protests. Well, hashtag me too. Uh, angry women will change the world. Wow. Angry women will change the world. Uh, I don't know. If she, yeah, she's a bride. She doesn't look too happy being a bride. <laughs> that woman's yawning. Um, but this is what's happening. Social justice and activism, activism. All right. Uh, Cho Nam Ju's 2016 novel, Kim Ji Young, uh, born 1982, is a devastating read. It relates in every woman's experiences of relentless sexism, inequality, and misogyny in contemporary South Korea. It also it is also a book that helped kickstart the country's 4B movement because like Namju's heroine, South Korean women have had enough. AB Media, thank you for uh, stopping through. Worn down by gender discrimination that inhabits all corners of their society, uh, 4B movement followers don't just want to fight against patriarchy, but move away from it altogether. As well as uh, Nam Ju's novel, 4B drew inspiration from the Escape the Corset campaign that took shape in the country in 2017, thanks to pioneers including Jayon Bora, who photographed women who had shaved their heads as an act of rebellion, and Summer Lee, who filmed herself without makeup and wearing baggy boyish clothes. Both were documenting South Korean women's attempt to throw off male domination and helped to attract a growing following for 4B. Please smash that like button if you haven't. If anyone wants to make a, a Cash App donation or a PayPal donation, my Cash App and PayPal are here. They're in the description box too, but... Uh, the likes would be great, if anything. All right. What are the four Bs for the uninitiated out there? The four Bs stand for this. 
Four B is based on four principles. Be home. No heterosexual, no heterosexual marriage. Be son. No to childbirth. Be an A. Be on A. No dating. And be sexu. No to heterosexual sexual relationships. Let me read those again. 4B is based on four principles. Be home. No to heterosexual marriage. Be chul son. No to childbirth. Be on A. No dating. And be sexu. No to heterosexual relationships. So I imagine all the old folks over there are probably scared as all. They're probably scared as hell over there. The old folks, the, the senior citizens. Okay. I imagine they are. But maybe, I don't know. Well, I, I, I won't say that. I was going to say maybe the older ladies, maybe maybe they're celebrating because maybe they wanted something like this when they were younger. I don't know. But I'm sure the older folks are probably saying, what the hell is going on here? I'm sure the president is saying, what the hell is going on here? Um, the West often views, let, let me go back. I That was just the beginning of the paragraph. The movement's, Proponents such as YouTubers Lena Bay, a beauty influencer who shares her experiences of unattainable beauty standards, and Bak Han Na and Jung Se Young post updates on its aim and progress. After studying feminism and non marriage, I started to live my life more focused on myself, says Han Na. Han Na. While Se Young's uh, decision not to marry was influenced by seeing how her mother and grandmother have been treated as subordinates in her family. Protests take place online and in cities across the country. A 2018 women's rights rally in Seoul lasted 33 hours as one woman after another took to the stage to relate their experiences of gender abuse. The West often views South Korea through a candy-colored lens. It's a country built on dignity, respect, smiling K-pop bands, and innovative technology, one that's certainly more liberal than its northern neighbor, yet South Korea has a long record of female subjugation. Yeah, I think K-pop, I think that, that Gangnam Style that that Gangnam Style song came out of there. That that was popular a couple years ago. You, you guys remember that? I can't think of the entire hook. The the, the Gangnam Style where they the, the, the guy the guy was doing this. I think that came out of South Korea. And I imagine, I imagine if I'm thinking about China. I imagine if China shut off all um, transmissions from the United States. I imagine North Korea must be trying to keep all that South Korean culture out of their country now with this with this going on all right let's go back i can't think of the name of that song but i know it was gangnam style something it was it was a pretty catchy hook by the way all right um during the 1950 50 1950 to 53 korean war male soldiers made women walk over roads they thought might contain landmines to check for safety. Between 1953 and 2021, abortion was illegal in most circumstances. A 2015 South Korean government study revealed that 80% of women had been sexually harassed at work. Digital crime, including stalking and sexual harassment, such as mocha, the act of upskirting and secretly filming women in bathrooms, is rife. Under current legislation, men accused of stalking can ask their victims to drop charges. Last year, a man murdered his former colleague after she refused to do so. The World Economic Forum's 2022 Global Gender Gap Index ranks South Korea at number 99 out of 100, 146 countries for gender equality. A January 2023 article in South Korea, in a South Korean newspaper, the CISA Times reported that 65% of women in the country do not want children. Okay. 
since my mother said um, I need to emphasize more data, I'm going to read that stat again to emphasize the data. A January 2023 article in the South Korean newspaper, the CISA Times, reported that 65% of women in the country do not want children. Some 42% do not want to get married, with over 80% of those citing domestic violence as their key reason. The country's incumbent male president, Yoon suk Yeol has promised to close down the South Korean Ministry of Gender Equality and Family that supports women and victims of sexual assault, claiming it treats men like potential sex criminals. Last November, local media reported that Suk Yeol's government had removed had a sneeze there. Last November, local media reported that Suk Yol's government had removed the terms gender equality and sexual minorities from school textbooks. Okay, so, okay, I'm not, as a, as a scientist and as a content creator, I'm just saying this, I'm not saying it's right or wrong for the people who would say, you know, you're, you know, culture, you know, question, the question is, does culture, can culture impact biology i think this president thinks so that's why he's trying to remove if that's true if that's true he's trying to remove that stuff because culture may impact biology all right and, and humans are the only animal in the animal kingdom that are that are doing this which is very very as mr spock would say very very fascinating captain So it matters what you teach. It matters what you teach students in school and what you, and how you socialize them. I was gonna say another word, but I'll just say how you socialize them. In her new book, Flowers of Fire, South Korean journalist, Haewon Jung, looks at the recent development of feminist movements. When I ask her what she thinks 4B might achieve, Jung points to a quote in her book from Lee Nay Yoon, or Young, a sociology professor at Seoul's Chung Ang University, the patriarchal norms, I'm sorry, the patriarchal norms of South Korea, given its economic status and the educational level of its women, are so relentless that the resistance against it tends to be just intense. Na Young says, movements like 4B are a message of warning that women would boycott romantic relationships unless society and men change. Okay, Simon Coates is a London-based writer and artist whose work has appeared in publications including the New European and Scottish newspaper, The National. All right, so there's a discussion about the 4B movement Okay, I don't know if this is a, it looks like an actual publication and not just a blog. <clears throat> I'm a blogger, so I know what a blog looks like, but I thought this, it's a short piece. I don't want to, I don't like to get on here and just read and read and read and read because my, my viewers get bored, but I think it gives a nice comprehensive look at what this is. Um, a lot of people don't know that, that this is going on, but they will know if it comes here and if it gains steam here. And it's it's an interesting it's an interesting thing uh, because these women are willing to uh, basically collapse the whole society for this because well let me let me let me play this clip. This clip will say it better than I can say it what would be the end result of something like this? And in this conversation, we weren't even talking about the 4B movement. We were talking about economics and population. So what are the 
ramifications of something like this? The workings of our government and our history better than some of <laughs> the citizens do here. So we know you, you guys already talked about social security and how, and how they're how they're replenishing that well. And we've heard so for so many years that it's not going to be there for 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 the the Gen Xers and those coming after us. And I'm sure you, you gentlemen have also heard that the Western countries, ours included, the populations are not replacing. We're, we're below replacement. They're not talking about this. The political class is. Does this have something to do with with all of that? <laughs> yeah, it's a Ponzi scheme. And when you no longer have enough people at the bottom of the Ponzi scheme, it, the Ponzi scheme falls apart. Yeah, what one of the things that contributes to an ever growing economy is an ever growing population, because the more people you have, the more entrepreneurs you have the more people you have to just simply work. And so we end up producing more stuff. And if we get to a point where our population turns around, starts declining, other things equal, I don't see from that point forward an ever expanding economy. I see an ever shrinking economy. Yep. And I'm, I'm a little worried about that. I think that, you know, that's not an unreasonable thing to be worried about. <laughs> an ever shrinking economy who's gonna yeah who's gonna pay the tax dollars to take care of the older people uh who's gonna build and maintain the bridges and the roads who's gonna be in your army if you have one so that has that has something like that something like this has huge ramifications for south korea and if it were to happen here that would be huge for everybody um here stephen j shaw i mean this is this is this has broad <clears throat> a broad impact on everybody but stephen j shaw i haven't uh what's the name of his documentary he made the rounds in terms of uh the, the interview circuit but he made a he he has made a, a um a really powerful documentary on this on world worldwide uh population collapse i'll probably sit down and watch it at some point but guys i just wanted to get on it and say something about this hopefully in a in a collegial way that doesn't uh create a quagmire for me later on i thank you guys for playing nicely there in the chat and not blowing it up with stuff um but could that movement make a tour stop here could it make a tour stop here I, I think that's that's something to think about and um it's certainly something even though they're not talking about it it's something that our, our political leaders are are looking at yeah population is a very very interesting discussion uh i think i think and i left the link for those of you who don't know about my stem channel i did leave the link to this one down there Uh, this one talked about Paul Ehrlich and the population bomb. That was the book he wrote. Uh, Paul Ehrlich was an entomologist and an ecologist. And I think I think one of the things our world leaders are looking at when you think about climate and you think about energy, I think one of the things they're worried about is energy. They don't they don't say it. They don't tell us everything. I mean, why would you tell the general public everything? Folks, folks would, would freak out. But I do think that energy is a concern. Is there enough? Are there enough fossil fuels? Is there enough? Are there enough petroleum products for everybody? Which is part of the push for the electric cars. Now I think they're selling it as being environmentally friendly, but I think the concern is that at some point everybody's going to run out of. We're going to run out of fossil fuels. That's one one thing. But also in this country, in this country. The immigration piece is in part about trying to keep the population stable because Chuck Schumer, Chuck Schumer came out and said this months ago, flanked by uh, uh, Hispanic and Latino colleagues, that the, the population in this country is not doing a good job of replacing itself. So they, they, they've said it. They haven't said it in a 
a loud way, but some of them have said it. Um, Seeking My Creator says, I would have thought that it started here. And he says the 4B movement, um, I mean. Okay. uh let's see very little made a comment about the passport rose a lot of interesting things happening around the world right now in addition to those iranian drone strikes on israel a lot there's a lot happening in the world right now um let's see t riddler says i'll read a few of these comments and to those watching this the view of the chat, the views of the chat don't necessarily reflect the views of the host. I'm not saying the chat doesn't know what they're talking about. I'm just saying I'm putting that disclaimer out there because people like to say, well, Dr. Dunbar, you said, you said, you said. No, I didn't say that. What T. Riddler said, uh, I'll put it like this. I think it, it's going to take a lot of self-discipline to give up all four of those in Western culture. I would agree with that. I think, yeah, I mean, yeah, cultures are different. Environments are different. This is a bigger country, a bigger landmass, several religions here. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just different. It's different. AB Media says uh, he's bringing some data or he's quoting some data here. He says one out of 10 South Korean men marry out. Okay, that's interesting. But based upon what's happening, they might not have any other choice. <laughs> uh, I'll read a few more, then I'll, I will wind this down. Um, Brent C., this is going back to the population data that I just showed from the CIA and I think the world. Let me see who, who created this data. took me back to Google. Okay, I don't know. I think the WHO did that or that the World Bank or whoever. But he says, um, the future is African. Good evening, all. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if Africa, the people over there are multiplying like that and most of the other, most of the rest of the world is not, then yeah, then the future is African. I'll read a few more and then I will wrap this up. Let's see. Yeah, it it uh, um it's very much a, a kamikaze strategy, uh, trying to defeat men by killing off societies or scorched earth, or um, it's almost like a suicide mission. We're gonna destroy the whole thing, you know, to get what we want. But you know, if I I don't know, I don't know how women live in South Korea. I don't know if it's if it's as it was described in that article, but if it is that bad and 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 they're being tortured like that, then this might be their only recourse in South Korea. Yeah, I'll read one more from Cynical Optimist. He says, I think it's a proliferation of Western schools of thought. The major difference is that the West has had the luxury for feminism to thrive. Okay. Okay. I do think it's interesting that according to that piece I read, their president is trying to scrub all these things out of their textbooks and all of their, their learning materials because I, he's probably trying to get these younger, the younger people to not, not jump on board with this. So, okay. Well, everyone, that's the 4B movement. That's, that's been in the cycle over the last two weeks that I saw that I've seen. It may have been floating around uh, before, but things show up on your radar at certain times. And that's shown up on my, on my radar recently. In addition to drizzle, drizzle. Which I won't be covering here, but you guys know what, th what that is. You guys know what that is. All right, everyone, I'm going to wrap this stream up. Um, I just wanted to get a quick one in. 
T Riddler. Good question. What's for dinner tonight? T Riddler, I'm going the boring route. Some leftovers. I have some spaghetti sauce in there. And I'm having some spaghetti tonight. That's what's for dinner. What are you having for dinner? Some people do think it's boring. Some people think it's boring to eat leftovers. I grew up eating leftovers. So for me, that's it's it's pretty uh I like eating leftovers, especially if it's something that I really, really like. But spaghetti is something that you can, if it's prepared correctly, I can eat that for a while. Change the environments that say that affects everything. Places of work, places of business, societies, culture and athletics and one of the themes of my book project uh the engineers a western new york basketball story one of the themes is changed environments i'm working on finishing this right now me and my brother are working on a, a book cover and I, I have my manuscript back from the editor so i'm working through that making some revisions trying to catch every every error but uh, changed environments, that's a huge, that, that happens everywhere. So when this is published, hope you guys will, will buy a copy. Uh, I'm going to read a few more comments there. T. Riddler, salad with rice. All right. D. Scott, I love leftovers. Uh, Indigo Flow, that's right. Some people say that the spices have to get down there in the meat or whatever it is. And on the next day, the food actually tastes better. I think I've experienced that as well in my culinary adventures. All right. All right, everyone. Well, that's all I've got. If you're new, if you are a reader, shout out to Diamond Dave. There aren't a lot of readers on YouTube. But in case you are a reader and you want to follow my literary adventures and my all of my content creation adventures. Uh, I do have uh, my Big Words LLC newsletter. There's a, a two paragraph greeting here. And there is a box that you, um, you click that subscribe button there and it takes you there and you can just enter in your email address and you are a part of uh, my club. And I promise I won't give your information away to anybody. So everybody, that's it. That's the 4B movement. Uh, you know, I, I, I cover a lot of things here. Current events, thoughts of the day, culture, money, current events, uh, written pieces. And sometimes it's just knowledge for knowledge's sake. So there we are. I hope you learned something. And uh, for the people who, ha who had not heard of this, that's what that is. And uh, I think our world leaders are curious as to whether or not it'll make stops in other countries just like this one. All right. All right, everyone. Um, take care. And I will talk to you again soon. Look out for the next one. Uh, as always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Uh, always try to do your best. Take care. And I will talk to you uh, the next time, and if you want to make a donation on, and you're watching on the, the replay, again, you can use my Cash App or PayPal, or you can leave a super thanks. I have a super thanks here as Dr. Well, I won't say his name, but you can leave me a tip there. All right, everyone. Have a good night. I'll talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.